I don't know what records nobody broke, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I broke Eddie's record. Me <laughs> too. I ain't been on stage in 27 years. In 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold out Kevin Hart show. There being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any well, comedy club. Kevin Hart. Now you know when Cat Williams said gatekeepers? Yeah. Kevin Hart, mm -hmm. I do his um, podcast. Yes. Kevin Hart has been the talk of the town recently for all the wrong reasons. For years, the comedian's rise to the top has been a subject of great controversy in the industry, and one man who has made it his personal mission to expose the skeletons in Kevin's closet is none other than Cat Williams. According to Cat, Kevin sold his soul to secure his spot in the industry. He even went as far as to call him in an industry plant. And just when Hart thought that Cat's fiery words were in the rearview mirror, Eddie Murphy entered the picture backing up Williams' claims. Apparently, the Coming to America actor has some serious dirt on the comedian. Just what receipts did Murphy reveal to prove Hart is an industry plant? And was Cat right all along? Let's find out. And I, I, I hate to seem like a petty individual for picking apart lies, but Jussie Smollett gonna keep lying until you say we don't believe you. To be fair, Cat and Kevin have never exactly been on good terms. As far as the public knows, it all goes back to the 2008 film, Fool's Gold. Though every Everyone remembers Hart lighting up their screens as Big Bunny. What most people don't know is that the role was originally supposed to go to Cat Williams. However, Williams was dealing with some legal issues back then, and so he had to part ways with the role. But you know what they say? One man's trash is another man's treasure. Kevin didn't miss a beat and swooped in to take advantage of the situation. Of course, Cat wasn't happy with how things turned out. To add salt to the wound, Hart struck once again as he snagged a chance to work with Eddie Murphy in Meet Dave. And guess what? This role was originally meant for Cat Williams as well, and just like that, the two comedians became sworn enemies. While Cat never outright admitted to beefing with Kevin, he did allude to feeling some sort of bitterness towards him. While promoting his film, Scary Movie 5, Cat said, I don't have a problem with Kevin Hart, I never have, simply because I am a fan of comedy and judge a person by what they bring comedically. If I am the king, then my crown is not supposed to be able to worn by anybody else. That doesn't mean they won't try to put it on someone else's head, but the crown won't match. I want my crown back. What's more, he talks about Hart stealing roles from him to this day. For a five-year period, every single movie that Kevin Hart did was a movie that had been on my desk that all I had said was just can we take some of this step and fetch it shit out and then I can do it like however Cat dealt his most lethal blow at the start of 2024 during his viral interview on the Club Shay Shay podcast Williams highlighted just how crazy it was that Kevin had a sitcom and a role in Soul Plane when it was only his first year in Hollywood he already had his deals when he got here have we heard of a comedian that came to LA and in his first First year in LA, he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called Soul Plane that he was leading. No, we've never heard of that before that person or since that person. What do you think a plant is? Sure, Kevin might have had some chops for this line of work, but let's be real, even talented dudes have a hard time scoring gigs when they're just starting out. Maybe Kevin just got lucky, but Cat isn't buying that. According to him, Hart must have pulled some strings behind everyone's backs to rise through the ranks. And that's why Kevin's a plant in Cat's eyes, someone who sold his soul to the Hollywood elite for a seat at the table. It might seem like Cat is bitter about Kevin doing better in the game compared to him. After all, when Kevin was busy snagging roles left and right, Cat had trouble getting gigs, owing to allegations of illegal substance use. However, fans don't need Cat to raise questions about Kevin's supposed values. You see, back in the day, Cat turned a lot of heads when he spoke of the dress controversy. According to him, every black comedian is asked to wear the dress at one point in his career. If he says yes, then he advances to the next level. However, if he makes the mistake of saying no, then it's goodbye. It's possible that there isn't anything funnier than a guy in a dress. And if that's the case, then it might also be said that there's nothing funnier than a black guy in a dress. Okay, well, I watched all of my friends throughout my entire life be able to dunk a basketball, but not me. So everybody can't do everything. So, you know, some of us make choices. I think it's not a biggest choice 
um, for others. Kat's words were met with mixed reactions. It's true there was a long list of black comedians who had donned the dress on the big screen, including the likes of Jamie Foxx and Tyler Perry. However, the part about it being a secret ritual to further one's career remained uncertain. In the face of uncertainty, Dave Chappelle stepped forward to clear the air. Back in the day, he sat down with Oprah Winfrey and talked about his reasons for turning down a $50 million contract. Apparently, he didn't want to lose himself to fame and fortune, which has been the case for most celebrities in the race. But Dave didn't stop there. He turned the tide of the conversation when he talked about how he, too, sees a trend of black comedians being forced to wear the dress. For certain dots, like when I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress, at some point in their career, I'll be connecting them down like, wow, all these brothers gotta wear a dress. What's twisted is that Dave also had to face the choice of wearing a dress or not back when he was working on a movie with Martin Lawrence. He walked into his trailer one day to find a dress waiting for him. At first, Dave was confused because wearing a dress wasn't in the script originally. He found himself even more bewildered when the producers told him it would be a fun skit. The writer comes in, I think he's the writer, he's like, Dave, listen, we got this hilarious scene where Martin's sneaking out of jail. So he disguises you as a prostitute. <laughs> and he put this dress on and it, huh? However, Dave was not easily swayed. He immediately shot down the idea. The directors tried their best to get him to change their mind, but Dave stayed firm on his decision. And surprisingly, him saying no to the dress didn't affect the script catastrophically as the directors had another scene ready to go all along. The minute it was clear, I was adamant, I'm not wearing the dress, I'm not wearing the dress. All right, fine, think of something else. That comes back 10 minutes later, the whole new scene, like, oh, damn, how did you write the scene so fast? You know, it's like, so you gotta take it. Dave's little tidbit ended up turning a lot of heads, and naturally, it happened to make its way to Kevin Hart during his interview. The comedian was asked about his thoughts on Chappelle's comments, and here's what he said. Dave Chappelle, another great comedian, said that, you know, in the industry, they tried to make him wear a dress. Have you ever ran into that with, with scripts, and, and is this something that, you know, you wouldn't do, you know, for? for uh, I definitely haven't ran into it. I mean, you know, you, you have to have you have to have boundaries. You have to have limits that you refuse to cross. Uh, you know, for me, I know what they are. Interestingly, Kevin talked about how if he was faced with the situation, he would put his values first. And as proof, he explained how he said no to dribbling a basketball on a morning show simply because he didn't think it was funny. From the way he was talking, it seemed like fans would never catch Kevin in a dress, but fast forward a year, and there he was parading the stage during an SNL sketch in a dress nonetheless. Safe to say, everyone was shocked. Uh, Pope Convention is lifting her arms into her signature muscle man pose. Mm. Truly adorable. Naturally, Kevin faced a lot of heat for his actions. From all angles, it looked like he had shaken hands with the devil, simply because he was that desperate for making it big. To be fair, he wouldn't be the first one. However, Hart denied the allegations, as he clarified that wearing the dress was completely his choice, and it wasn't a ritual like most people assumed. Sure. No, you know what? I was actually I was actually one of those comedians that said, no, I wouldn't wear a dress. There's no way I would wear a dress. And, and then, when proposed with the opportunity of what I felt was funny, I said, oh, that's funny, I'm gonna do it. Oh, Kawanzane is, is relevant. Yeah, that's funny, she's small. I can do the whole thing, it'll be funny. Uh, I think now, knowing about the opportunities, that, that can be thrown at you. It's all about choice. Though Kevin tried his best to clear the air, this wouldn't be the last time that fans would talk about the dress controversy. Even Eddie Murphy addressed the matter in his own way. He had a scene in his movie Foolish, where his character was asked to wear a dress, and he wasn't too happy with that proposal. Foolish, this isn't a throwaway role. You'll be carrying the emotional energy of the movie. Man, it's, it's not that I don't appreciate the offer because I do, but all we're asking you to do is to take the script home, read it, and make a decision. Then make the decision. Fool. There's a lot of money. Everyone knows Murphy as a laid-back guy. Unlike Kat, he's never been one to stir up drama, so the fact that he chose to address the dress controversy means there's something to it after all. And let's not forget, Murphy's been in the game longer than a lot of folks. So if anyone knows a thing or two about how things are done behind the scenes in Hollywood, it's him. Safe to say, fans know where Murphy stands on the debate, and chances are he doesn't agree with Kevin's choices. Unfortunately for Kevin, Murphy and Williams are not the only ones who have it out for him. It seems like the community of black 
comedians wants nothing to do with Hart because not only did he allegedly abandon his ideals for the pursuit of his goals, but he's also screwed over a few of them, including Monique. Like Kat, Monique sat down on the Club Shay Shay podcast and gave everyone some insider information about her relationship with Kevin. And guess what? Mo didn't have the best words for him. Kevin and Monique linked up when the The Parkers star was dealing with some precious drama. Back then, Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey, the two executive producers for the movie, had asked Mo to pack her bags and promote the film at the Cannes Festival. However, there was one catch. Oprah and Tyler were not planning to pay Mo for her troubles. Mind you, Monique only received a disappointing $50,000 for her role in the movie. She had worked tirelessly without receiving due compensation. Naturally, she didn't want to exhaust herself even more by going on a promotion. That too, without getting a paycheck in return. And so she told Oprah, I'm doing a comedy tour, I have a husband, and I have babies, I have a little bit of downtime, and I'm going to take advantage of it. So I'm not going anywhere because I'm not obligated to go anywhere. I've done my part. However, Mo had to pay big time for saying no to some powerful people. And that was no. Now I said no to some very powerful people. I said no to Oprah Winfrey. I said no to Tyler Perry. I said no to Lee Daniels and I said no to Lionsgate. Before she knew it, she was being called difficult and hard to work with in the tabloids. In a cutthroat industry like Hollywood, reputation means everything to an actor, and Monique's was in the gutter, all thanks to the bitterness of those in the upper management. In the aftermath, Mo found herself blackballed from the industry. Despite being an Oscar winner, she had a hard time landing roles. In times like these, Mo needed all the help she could get, and guess who emerged as her knight in shining armor? It was none other than Kevin Hart himself. He apparently offered to be the bridge between Tyler Perry and Mo. He apparently called Perry to talk things out on Mo's behalf and then reported back to the actress, saying, Mo, I talked to Tyler. He said he didn't want to revisit it, but I'll tell you what, let's move past that, Mo. Let's just do great things together. Don't even worry about it. He also went above and beyond to help Monique by giving her a loan, which she paid back with interest. When my family was up against the wall, Kevin Hart wrote us a check and said, here you go. We're forever grateful for that. When we were able to give it back, we said, brother, we appreciate you with some interest on top because I don't ever want nobody to think like me and my husband. Yeah, yeah. So I want to make sure I put that out there. That was that brother really helped us out when we needed to be helped out. And that's not all. Hart also promised to help out Monique with getting her talk show back. Mo recalled him saying, whatever you want to do, I will partner with you. I'll executive produce with you. You just let me know. Of course, Kevin was a big name in the industry back then, and having him on her show would have easily pulled Monique out of the slump that she was in. However, when the time came for Kevin to follow through on his promise, he apparently blew off Monique. Her company had apparently called up Kev's manager, Dave Becky, to discuss the deets, but were met with a slap in the face when Becky said, Kevin doesn't want anything to do with Monique. Disappointed, Mo decided to call up Kevin herself to ask him what was up, and he apparently only offered her false promises. He said, Mo, that's that's a miscommunication. I can tell you right now. I said, wait a minute. Are you okay, though, with this white man calling him up? Getting in between our relationship and something you said. He said, Mo, I'm, that's a miscommunication, and we're going to talk Tuesday. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm telling you right now, it's a miscommunication. That was two years ago. If you talk to him, I talk to him. Not the kind of response Mo was expecting from someone who called her a friend, family member, an auntie, a mama, and a spirit when she appeared on his podcast in 2011. It felt like she had been stabbed in the back. Fans found it interesting that both Mo and Kat brought up Kevin Hart while sitting down with Shannon Sharp. One fan wrote, Kat Williams sat right where Monique now sit and told us the same thing about Hollywood, especially Black Hollywood, and once again, Kevin Hart is brought up. Unk and auntie are so real ones. As for why Kevin did what he did, well, some fans think he realized that helping Mo met, sacrificing his position with the Hollywood elite, and there was no way on earth he was going to let that happen. Unfortunately for Kevin, there are more obstacles down the road, as his ex-wife Tori Hart will be going on tour with Cat Williams. The two were married from 2003 to 2011 and even welcomed two kids together, Heaven and Hendrix Hart. Unfortunately, Tori and Kevin didn't exactly end things on good terms. You see, Tori found out that Kevin was sleeping around. In fact, she believes that his current wife, Eniku Hart, is one of the women with whom Kevin messed around during his marriage. Mind you, it's not mere speculation. Back in 2017, Eniku shared an Instagram post where she said that she'd been with the comedian for eight years now. Meanwhile, Kevin had only been separated from Tori for six years. To add to the drama, Tori told TMZ, numbers don't lie. What's more, Tori apparently was Kevin's right-hand man, or woman to be more appropriate behind the scenes. During her appearance on the Russ Parr Morning Show, Tori was asked if she contributed to her ex-husband's stand-up material when they were together, and 
and here's what she said. Definitely a lot, you know. We were together almost every day. Pretty much before he started comedy, we were together, so there was definitely inspiration, she said. A lot of people don't know I was given the title of class clown in high school. I've always been in the arts. We met in the theater arts class, so it was bound to happen. That's how God set it up. But guess what? Kevin never gave her the credit she deserved. However, Tori's carving her own path in the industry now as she's planning to hit the road with Hart's biggest rival, Cat Williams. Now that's an interesting way to get back at Hart for all that he put her through. The Atlanta X's star shared the news on her Instagram on January 8th with a picture of Cat and shared three dates for the Dark Matter tour. She also shared a clip of Cat from his viral interview with Shannon Sharp, where he talked about only putting on comedians who are funnier than him. I'm not the comedian you can give that to. I only put on comedians that are funnier than me. Anybody that ever told you differently was a fat Faison liar. Mind you, this is the same interview where Kat read Kevin to absolute filth. Safe to say, Tori knew what she was doing when she posted that clip, and it looks like she managed to strike a nerve. One TMZ reporter took the opportunity to ask Kevin about how he felt about his ex-wife going on tour with Kat, and even though he wished her well, fans don't think that's the case. Just look at the annoyance on his face when the question was popped. Again, you know, your ex-wife is going on tour with Kat. I want everybody to I hope the tour is great. I love that. So you are supportive of her. Thank you, Mr. Hive. One fan commented, Wait until that sprinter van door closes. I don't think that he's going to have the same energy lol. That said, Kevin's not exactly twiddling his thumbs. Following Kat's fiery interview, Kat responded to the comedian's comments about him on X. He wrote, Gotta get that anger up out you champ. It's honestly sad. In the meantime, please enjoy my movie trailer to my next film, Lift, which will be dropping on Netflix in eight days. There is a moment in the trailer where Gugu and Batha Ra says, they really love you. I now know she's talking about Kat. Mark your calendars, world. This one is special. What's more, during his interview with WSJ, magazine for its spring 2024 men's fashion issue, Kevin acted like Kat's words didn't get to him when the topic was brought up. He said, it's just that. It's entertainment. If that's what he fuels himself off, God bless him. Good for him. I hope he gets all that he needs and he wants, and I'm here cheering for him from afar. That's my real energy. I really mean it. That's how happy and secure I am with my career and my life. That said, Kevin has his work cut out for him. It seems like fans are more on Kat's side than his. One person commented, Kevin is a sellout with his lying ass, talking about, a dress that's funny, I'll do it. He knows that if he wouldn't have done it, he would have got some kind of punishment. He's not really funny like the real ones where you're laughing the whole hour or two hours. They're performing, not Kevin. It's a laugh here and there on his stand-up. But what do you think of the situation? Is Kevin Hart really an industry plant as Kat claims? Is Murphy going to say more on the matter? And what's Hart going to do about the long list of allegations. Let us know in the comment section below.